everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I am Pierre and this is Simple Homebrew. I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. Just can't believe that I'm nearly at 5,000 subscribers. So guys, you're the reason why we're at this point. Anyway, today I'm doing a New Zealand homebrew Black Rock Colonial Lager. If you're interested in following along, please do. Before I start this guys, I'd like to give a shout out to Bill Bailey. Bill Bailey is a Patreon member of mine. He also is a new Australian. He comes in from America and uh, has started a new life here in 2023. He kindly asked me if I could let you know about his internet page, Alibi. Absolutely beautiful. I had a look at it myself, had a bit of a read. The guy's an inspiration. He's obviously come here from another country and is enjoying our new little world, Australia. So welcome him, have a look at his page, and uh, check it out, I'll leave a link down below. Cheers. Just for those who haven't seen this channel before, I've been around for about five years now. It's uh, about a thousand subscribers a year I've been getting, and it's, that's not bad for a homebrew channel, I can tell you. Um, some channels are a lot worse off than I am, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, but I've learnt how to brew doing YouTube, and I do make mistakes, and I show them on my channel. This one is a New Zealand homebrew Black Rock Colonial Lager. Now, on the instructions, it's just like a standard brew. For those of you who haven't done extract brewing before, all you need to do is grab your can, read the instructions that are written on the can. If there's no instructions on the can, go online. Uh, there are all places you can go to to do extract brewing on, and they'll give you full information on how to make a standard out of the can extract. What normally happens is you pull the lid off like this. It has a little bit of a thing on that. So basically you never use this lid again. So it gets thrown into the recycle bin. It is recyclable, it's made of plastic. And it has a little symbol saying recyclable. So use that. They do provide you with premium ale. Oh, premium brewery yeast is five grams. Now, five grams. Now, a lot of them are saying do two packets of 11 grams, 21 or 22 grams of yeast. And these guys are only putting five grams and they say that's enough. So I'm gonna go buy that. Now, these cans are great. They've got their own pull tabs. We don't need a can opener. I do have a can opener. This beauty is a great little can opener. I've just got it from a local supermarket. Um, it's been great. My wife always hunts it down when she needs to open a can. So what we do now is not open this. We actually heat it up. We need to warm it up for about 10 to 15 minutes with boiling hot water. I put about two litres in this container here. This is a blue plastic container. I just get the kettle, this bloke here. Put on. I put two litres of water in there already. It's way over the max line. Doesn't matter, it seems to work fine. I'll boil that, it's ready to go. So once it's boiled, we'll get to the next step. So just before we get started, I've put on some gloves. These are nitrile gloves. They're, um, like they're low allergy ones. So basically, I won't get skin rashes and things like that. My hands are so dry that when I work with sanitizer, it just ruins them for a couple of days. Anyway, let's get stuck into this pouring of the hot water. So I've got this. This is my kettle of hot water. And all we do is pour it into this bucket. Now I wasn't, I'm not pouring it into the big sink because it's 40, 100 degrees Celsius water. And the sink is huge and it's not going to cover much. But if I put that in there now and I'll put the lid on, that will sit in 100 degrees Celsius water for about 15 minutes, which will thin out the extract and help it pour once I start making the beer. What I'm fermenting it in is a Apollo. This is a plastic Apollo PET fermenter from Keg King. They supplied this about a year ago. It's a pressure fermenter. So guys, you've got to check your pressures and you've got to make sure you have a blow off valve to make sure it doesn't over pressurize as, as well as a PCV valve, um, a pressure control valve. Uh, basically, this baby will pressure ferment under, I'll put it at about five PSI and then bring it up to about 15 PSI, getting closer to the end of fermentation. You do need to test these once a year to make sure that they can handle the pressure. Uh, plastic does stretch and move and tends to get weak spots, but been, it's been a good fermenter and I've, I'm really happy with it. I now will put a little bit of gas in it, this little gas bottle. I'll just set it up. I'll put a small amount of gas in there 
just need to pressurise it a little. Uh, at the moment, it's set to whatever pressure that's set at. And there we go. We're looking at 10 psi, around about. And I'll just inject a bit into the gas, into the fermenter, just to pressurise it so I can use that pressure to push the liquid I have in here, which is sanitizer, out through the pipes. So I can actually sanitize these pipes at the same time. Run it through here, I'll run it through that one as well. Tip it upside down and push that valve in. That'll put more sanitizer in that one. Now these are a popper valve. I'm going to tip it upside down and just push that valve in so that the sanitizer runs through this hole as well to sanitize the internal part of this as well, which is kind of a good idea. Uh, as well as the pressure relief valve, PRV. What we have here are two quick connects. I'll show you pictures of this so you can't see it where I'm showing it. The quick connect with the notches in it is your gas side. The quick connect without the notches is your fluid side or your liquid side. I put the liquid pipe, the transfer pipe, on the liquid side out because that is attached to a pipe that runs down into the uh, sanitizer. And I'm going to put a joiner, which is an open circuit, on the other end. And because it's under pressure, fluid will come out of here really quick. So I'm going to pump that. You won't be able to see it from that angle. And I think I have not enough pressure. <laughs> so now the uh, fluid is pumping through nice and evenly. I'll just do that. I'll probably put a hundred mil through and stop it. I don't want to waste too much gas. Even though I need oxygen in there, I'll pop it away. And then this has been sanitized and pressurized. So now it's kept under pressure and it will stay sanitized until I'll use it next. So it helps clean that. And now I just need to tip this and just push the little button underneath. So what I'll do then is use this poppet. This is the gas side. I'm just going to let fluid out. Just like that. Just to get that area sanitized as well. That's all it needs. So now I depressurize and tip out the rest of the sanitizer. This little beauty sanitized as well, so I'll pop that back in. Now, in there, you probably saw it, there's a heap of foam. That foam will not harm you. It's very good to keep all the foam in there like that to keep it sanitized. Now, we have oxygen in here, and I uh, haven't seen ever, ever seen any problems with brewing using ambient air. And I see a lot of people talking about injecting with oxygen. You can over oxygenize your beer before you start brewing, uh, just, just so you know. So the next thing I have to do is calculate how much I'm going to need. Now on the side of my fermenter, I have a little uh, increment gauge to show me how much fluid I have in my fermenter. So I will fill it up with cold water to about 16 litres, dissolve this in two litres of hot water, and then top it up with the extract. Nah, nah, I'm not going to do that. Nah, I made that mistake last time. I'm going to need to keep the temperature around about 20 degrees Celsius. So what I'm going to do is pour the extract in, then I'm going to fill the fermenter all the way up until it's about 18 litres. Then I'm going to dissolve my dry malt extract or brew enhancer from Cooper's and pour that in and then top it back up to 23 litres just to keep it cool enough to not melt the fermenter. Well, let's do it, huh? It's been about 15 minutes, so let's get into it. So guys, I did a shorts video just recently on Camden. And these Camden tablets are metabisulfite, uh, potassium metabisulfite. It's also got a little bit of lactose in it and some other things, but this is basically to neutralize chloramine and chlorine in your water. Now, some municipals in America and Australia have chloramine as well as chlorine. We have both. We have chlorine and chloramine in our water supply. So we need to crush one of these into some hot water and dissolve it. So basically, this will help neutralize the chlorine and chloramine in the water, as well as you know, clear out some bacteria and stuff as well. One tablet, 
I'll crush it up and then I'll pour some hot water in it to dissolve, to dissolve it and I'll pop that into the fermenter before I start doing anything else. And it's only a little bit of hot water, it's not going to melt the fermenter straight away. Now what the Camden tablets will do is uh, help with the flavours in your beer. You know, you get this, if, if you're using tap water at home, you get this weird flavour, after flavour, when you finish fermenting and it sticks around throughout the whole beer. That is the chlorine that's in your system and chloramine. If you can get rid of that or neutralise it a little bit, it'll definitely clean your beer up. It won't make it perfect, but it's much better than it was. The best way is to use, use fresh mineral water that's been uh, filtered out and sterilised uh, without chlorine and all that other product. But I haven't got that. I've just got water from the tap. And my tap water's pretty good anyway. All right, so this is dissolved in the uh, cup. It has one tablet. It's completely dissolved in hot water. I'm going to pour it into this fermenter. Just quickly, it won't, like I said, it won't melt it. It's um, not going to cause any issues at all because it's only a small amount. And the thing is to cool it off before it even gets there. Now I can add everything else I want to do. I will put 16 litres of tap water into, and now it's filtered tap water. I do have, and I'll show you. I put a little RV filter in here, just here. This is a consumption safe pipe uh, hose for you know, RVs, you know, traveling and stuff like that. I've used it for this purpose. Basically, it's a 15,000 litre maximum filter. What I do is I use my Keglan Filometer. This I bought many years ago and it works a treat. Uh, I need to just set it up to 16 litres. So I'll clear it out like that and then move it across until we see six, six, one. That is now going to be 16 litres to put into my fermenter. That way I know how much I put in. If you want to buy one, I have an affiliate link down below. If you want to check it out, they aren't too expensive at all. And if you buy one through my link, I will get a bit of a kickback too. Cheers. Again, this is an RV human consumption safe fluid hose that we use. You can use it to go on camping. I'm going to fill this up to 16 litres. And as it's filling, it's aerating as well. So the fermenter says 18 litres on the side and the filometer says 16 litres. I'm going to have to recalibrate the filometer, I think. <laughs> I'm sure that the sticker on this hasn't changed and I know that's the right measurement. I've tested it already. Okay, so we're two litres out. Okay, that's good to know. So I'm going to have to recalibrate that filometer. That can be done. Next job. I know I've got 18 litres, lucky I went to 16, huh? Uh, so basically, I now need to add the extract. We'll open the box. Can out. And open it. Love these pull tabs. Love them. Good time, big time. Look at that. That is just beautiful. Sit that back in the container where it's good, and we'll throw that straight into our fermenter. That's actually quite warm. The actual container is quite warm too. That's really good. Now the fermenter spraying it everywhere. He's saying about 19 litres on the fermenter. And I'll just throw it in as I'm cleaning out the can. Another thing I should need to advise you guys, I'm going to use this as a stirring stick for now. Uh, should I use this one? Yeah. Sanitizer in a can. So basically in a bottle, spray bottle. So I spray my equipment down with sanitizer before I attach it to this because it's now at temperature. Anything below 65 degrees Celsius is susceptible to, even above it a little bit, is susceptible to bacteria. You don't want external bacteria getting in your beer if you want it to taste the way you want it to taste it. I sanitize this, leave it for 30 seconds, talk crap to you, <laughs> I'm joking. Um, and then I'll start stirring this to get a bit more extract out before I finish up. Now normally, you know, if I've got a metal or a, a, a fermenter that can handle heat, I will just pour 
the extract in first. Oh, I need to dissolve the uh, dex as well, or the uh, enhancer. So we're at 19 and a half litres. I need to now put some dextrose in here, fill it up with hot water. Oh, burnt browns. It's part of the extract. There's little black things in here that shouldn't be in there, but it's part of the extract. Um, so I'm going to boil some water again, fill up the container with... Ah, I can't do that. You know what? I've done this before. And people said, no, you don't do that, but there's no reason why you shouldn't. This is it. This is a brew enhancer by... Uh, what do you call them? What do you call them? Peoples? Wonderful stuff. It dissolves so easily. It's amazing. So you, you really don't have to dissolve it in hot water. It will dissolve in your fermenter on its own. And the yeast will eat through it automatically. It won't matter if you don't dissolve it properly. And I've tried it before and it works a treat. This is it. What I'll do is I'll, I'll spray a bit of sanitizer on the packet just around the top because it's been put in in a factory by somebody or something and I'll tear it just like that and pour it you still recording yep pour it right in just as it is and those diehards out there who say that's not how you do it well actually it can be done that way and it won't actually hurt it like I said, the yeast will eat through it anyway, regardless whether it's dissolved perfectly or not. I promise. Right, I'm going to keep topping it up. Oh, yeah. I'm only doing half cans, by the way. 21, nearly, uh, nearly 22, just a little bit more. For me, that'll do. It doesn't have to be 23 litres. It can be damn close, though. It's damn close, I can tell you. <laughs> it says pretty much just under a smidgen under 23 litres on the bottle on the container. I'll just quickly give it a wipe down, grab some water, and get some sanitizer on that. And just give it a quick wipe because I've got some splashed over the actual container. I don't want ants coming in here looking for a feed. Actually, this is going in the fridge. Nice. Okay. Lid on, slide that down into place, nicely sealed, throw it on. I'll give it a shake. This is it here. As you can see, the extract is on the bottom. Let's get clean. Oh, you can't probably see that, actually. So you can see a bit of extract there. So what is the workout? Now let's shake. Ooh, it's a workout. I have this beauty. It's a pill given to me by Mick Ede. Mate, thank you very much. I've just charged it using a. Uh, I'm going to start to riff. The main reason you mix your brew enhancer or your maltodextrin or your dextrose with hot water. Uh, before you pour it in, is to get it dissolved perfectly. That way you can take a proper gravity reading. Now, it's dissolved pretty much all. It has Now, all of it's pretty much dissolved. There's a couple of little bit of specks in the bottom. It's going to be giving me a close to accurate reading. It's enough for me, but for you, you might need a bit more. Right now, I'm going to open the lid. I'm going to throw in the yeast, and I'm going to throw in my pill, and then take a gravity reading, a manual gravity reading, because I don't trust the pill immediately. I have to wait for it to uh, relax and uh, settle and then I can check it later. So first thing I'll do is grab the yeast provided by the company. I'll quickly spray it again with sanitizer over the part where I'm going to tear it. Uh, two things it does, it kills any kind of bacteria that might be on it. It also stops the hairs coming out. There we go. So that's our yeast. Yeast does have yeast nutrient in it. So I've already used in. Oh, not the packet. Jeez. Yeah. That's in. You're recording, Lucky. And the pill. Yep. Pill. Now I have to sanitise this as well. Quickly 
throw sanitizer on here. My camera's about to shut down because it's overheating, like usual on hot days. Pill, gonna throw it in. Yoink, that's in for good. Pop the lid on. Make sure that they haven't fixed it, bugger that up, right? I'm gonna pressurize this a little. Gas side. Not gas on, gas side. That's pushed it enough. Right, now my pill is in, my yeast is in. This is pressurized and it's ready to go. Um, I just need to quickly grab a sample, which we'll do now. Just quickly push it through just like this. Top her up to about there. I'll let that run out. I am gonna taste this too. Mm. So, there's our sample. I'll taste it first. Mm. A little bit of sweetness to it. That's a good height. It actually tastes like cordial. <laughs> anyway, throw that in, we'll tell you what gravity it's at. It won't be high. I'll pop it on. Flat surface, like I said, it'd be about 1046 or so, like that. So, there it is. Rotate that so we can see it. What's up against the edge? Uh, yeah, it's about 1040. I'm looking at about 1040. One, two, three, four. 1044 is our starting gravity, maybe a little bit more, but that's fine. Now we won't tip that back in because back now we'll contaminate our beer and we don't want that happening. So everything is in, ready to go. Give it another quick shake. Oh, jeez. Just to get the yeast and everything through. Done. That is now going into my fridge and it's going to ferment four to seven days. Basically, it's going to work out really well, hopefully. Now the fridge is going to be set at 19 or 18 degrees Celsius. We have got some hot weather coming. We have got some hot weather coming. Uh, that's fine, we can handle that. The fridge is a fermentation fridge and it's ready to handle that. So I'll show you what I do. So what we have is um, a fermentation fridge, which is this guy. I've had this for a few years now. This is a, um, a Sterling and this Sterling has been great. It cost me about 300 bucks from Aldi once. Now Aldi, you might guess, is one of my favorite places to go for brewing equipment. You can get things that are different, that work, and are awesome. So what I've done is basically put the heat belt on, just in case the weather does get cold, it will bring the temperature back to where it is. You can see a little bit of the, uh, what do you call it, the pill sitting in there. In here is a tube that goes all the way down inside the fermenter, and I will put a probe inside to actually check on the temperature, make sure it is actually staying at the temperature it needs to be kept at. And that will now be zipped up and dropped into the fridge. Or what we call the fermentation chamber. So what I have to do is uh, pressurize the fermenter to at least five PSI. Five PSI is a good pressure. It'll allow the bad fermented gases to escape quicker uh, in order to get rid of it faster so we don't have that permanently engraved in our beer. Once it's gone, which is you know vigorous fermentation, once vigorous fermentation drops, we can then drop it to, uh, raise it to 15 PSI, if you want, to get a bit of carbonation in it, and it will work really well. So what I have to do is basically pressurize this to 5 PSI using the gas. So the gas gauge is set to around about, there we go, around about five PSI, a bit less, Bit more. Open the valve up. Just bring that pressure up a little to about there. I'll just lift them out just to. Yep. That's about 5 psi there. So I will push that into the fermenter, which is. Yeah. 
You can hear that going in. It sounds like it stopped moving now. So that would tell me that it's around about 5 psi. I have this Spundy here. This little bloke I got from uh, Keking again, they invented it. It is a great little device. I've never had an issue with it. Some people say they're not overly great. Uh, I think they're fine. I've never had an issue with them, like I said. I just put a bit of sanitizer on it. Just a bit of sanitizer on the gas side. I just flicked that out so that it has no chance of contaminating my beard too much anyway. Throw that on. The click on. There we go. So it's clicked on. And I need to change the pressure of this to 5 psi. And that would now stick around about 5 psi or less to keep the pressure right. So I'll leave that for about four days. That is a safety valve. It'll actually make sure that it doesn't overpressurize. And this is a secondary safety valve to stop that from happening as well. Regardless of when you put, a, if you put a bow tie, a blow tie on there, it's still got the valve here that could block. Either way, either of these can block and be a problem. So be careful, keep your eye on it, make sure it's correct and doesn't over block or over pressurize. They can explode. Okay, so we're gonna come back to that uh, in the near future. So three or four days, we'll have a look at how it's fermenting and see how we go from there. We'll see you then. Well, just a quick test. Uh, this is 10.15. Uh, it's finished. I've actually, this is my second test. I'm cold crashing it. So I'm dropping it down to uh, two and a half degrees Celsius to try and clear it out. And it's a bit cloudy still. So hopefully it will clear out a bit. And a bit of carbonation. Ooh, fruity. It's actually very nice even if it's not aged yet, so that's awesome. All right, we'll uh, go to the next step. I should say, it's been seven days, seven days since I started this. It's ready to go, it's finished fermenting. It's at 10.15. Um, and now I'm gonna transfer it to a keg as soon as it cold crashes, which will be in about 24 to 48 hours time. All right, we'll get stuck into that. All right, here it is, the beer. Finally, I transferred it out of the uh, refrigerator, refrigerator into my keg. So I've got about 19 litres sitting there waiting. So I'm going to pop that into my kegerator, let it age for about a week, week and a half, and hopefully it'll age beautifully. It does smell pretty good. Um, it needs a little bit of carbonation. It's got natural carbonation already in it. It's got a few bubbles. So it's a quick grab. Grab the glass. It's not clean. Not really clean. But it's a first taste. Let's try it, huh? Mmm. Oh, I didn't expect that. It's actually carbonated. Wow, and it's good. A little bit of sweetness to it. Um, it uh, fermented down to 1.014, uh, which I believe that would be a one, no, 4.3% alcohol volume. Um, it's very nice. In about a week, that'll be even nicer. This is a good kit brew. And I'm really happy I did it. Guys, these Black Rock lagers, these Black Rock products, they, they just come out great. I never have, I never have any real issues. Right, you'll get a tasting video in a couple of weeks and uh, we'll let you know how it actually tastes at the end. Guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching this whole video right through. Pop your comments below. Tell me what you think. Um, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me pay for this sort of stuff and make these videos. It's really important that they support this channel and it's been great that they have. And we'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. <laughs>